to go down to the future match right now. I love the big red elimination match uh, text. Really, really drive it home. This is a knockout match. One of these players is going home. Canada's got uh, some some wacky arts up here, trying to parse what's going on over here. We've got some uh, no amulet and explore. Uh, I've never seen a drive before. It's interesting dryad. On Rebel side, we got uh, Dragon Red Channeler, Amp Raptor, Discharge, Lava Dart. Not the most explosive draw. What do you think Rebels should be doing here? Um, I don't hate Rebels draw because I do think DRC is pretty potent in the matchup, being able to attack through Grazer consistently once you get the Delirium. I don't like the Galvanic Discharge is a little bit of a dead card, but Canister does have a Dryad, so that might present itself as a line where you just want to go like Lava Dart plus Gal of the Dryad. Um, I also realized Canister is playing that new six drop bear from Bloomborough. You're going to have to remind me what the name is because I did not play a lot of Bloomborough Limited. Uh, Luma Bellower of the Woods, I believe. I had that card and, in the record, actually. And that returns one or two lands when it ETBs. How about all? All oh. lands, actually. Yep. Oh, wow. Bringing them all back. And Mills 4 as well. So Mills 4 and then returns all lands, Reclamation style. Uh, it's a really powerful effect. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't I'm not too familiar with that card, but I'm very interested to see if that ever shows up on the battlefield because it has power and toughness equal number of lands you control like cultivator colossus yeah it's interesting because it, it has the same effect as aftermath analyst does where it's effectively six mana return all lands but it's all up front you can't break it up uh but the big body is of course a, a big deal as well and then i guess milling four is a little more too see a little more value there too but we'll see so we got uh looks like a mulligan from canister into what looks to be a mulligan of five but has Grazer Amulet, uh, but no green just yet as the gardens can get there a little bit. We see uh, Rebel on the play here, which is a huge, huge deal. Not impossible to overstate that. Does keep the hand uh, and uh, got lead up on the Dragon Rage Channeler. We see a turn one Urza Saga from Canister into an amulet. Nope. I saw a click. I got fooled. Canister top deck. Here. The green source and the Besage you like a professional. So could go turn one Grazer into Urza Saga. Yeah, so interesting, we can see here, obviously, the Grazer is kind of like the ideal turn one play to make the blocks going, but Rebel has the Discharge, too, and nothing really to do with it as well. It's kind of a little cat and mouse here, and uh, Canister deciding. One of the things where you like you have your play already set up, and you draw a card that changes it, you go, oh, okay, I want to do now. So, I'm going to go over Visaju into Grazer, into Saga as planned, and uh, great start for Canister with the Amulet and the Titan uh, ready to go. No bounce land yet, but getting close. We see an amulet as a draw for Rebel. And like you said, this is sort of like the grindier half of Rebel's deck here. The Amp Raptors, the, the amulets, the discharges, all very powerful, but not that aggressive. Yeah, I think that the amulets and the Amp Raptors might actually get Rebel killed in this matchup just because they're such slow pieces of card advantage compared to the rest of the cards in the list. So it's definitely not great to have it here, but it's very good to have it in other matchups like Jeskai, which are just trying to wrath you and gain control. That's when the grindy cards really come in. We see an attack for one with the fetch land. Could have gone for an aggro lava dart to try and spike the delirium. Uh, right now, we, go, so we could have seen you know, a, a lava dart of flashbacks and surveils, uh, but going to decline on that for now. Here comes the garden. Here comes the amulet. The one ring is drawn also. Uh, the garden can turn into an amulet. Uh, uh, and yeah, make a second amulet. Now. Yeah. All right. So this is interesting. Yeah, setting up canister to that point where if he just top decks any bounce land he's gonna have three amulets in play and that's gg yeah uh of course so that that is the land as well so now a land is no longer a land so the one ring is not available if the land is strong it's not a bounce land we see bobble four channeler little surveil action bit of land so an end step uh scry land also or surveil land bobble takes a peek gonna and mention now, yeah, we... last turn was there some consideration to going maybe upkeep galvanic to fix your draws a little bit if you're Rebel, because you're going to gallop the Grazer most likely that turn anyways, regardless of your draw. So I wonder if maybe doing the Galvanic and upkeep and binning this unstable amulet was better for her. Yeah, possibly. Obviously, hindsight, you know, it's on top. And you might want to you might want to cast the card you draw. It was like a slick shot shot or something like that, too. But uh, we can see, uh, unfortunately, no Delirium. A lot of cards in the bin, but only an attack for one. And we see an amulet hits a Raptor, another Raptor. So unfortunately, um, this is the grindy half of the deck, which is not ideal. Uh, and I guess oh, I guess this works out, of course. The, the Urza Saga goes to find an expedition map. 
which can then go find the bounce lands. This makes this makes the double amulet setup look reasonable. Oh, Never mind, it's not a bounce it's a land. It's a field. Sure. That's sick. I thought for sure he was going to get Bounce Land and just cast Ring, but it looks like Canister has other plans, floating six mana with this Lotus and then casting the Primeval Titan. What does he get here? Uh, I mean, Red Land Haste, I guess, right? And then more lands, I suppose. The, mm. I'm not going to lie. The annual deck confuses the hell out of me. I'm, I'm just going to be totally honest. I'm not going not gonna to try and hide it and look cool. Uh -huh. And then this version has even more things going on that are making my head spin. So... We see a mirror pool here. Okay, so this happened against Meals. This is kind of cool. So mirror pool can copy the Titan. So right. the amulets will untap the, the uh, mirror pool as well as the Simic Growth Chamber. That'll make much enough mana to activate the mirror pool, targeting the Titan, making a new Titan, which can go get more lands, and then can get double uh, activations on the haste land from both amulets. So Yeah, Valakut plus haste land here is most likely what we're going to see. And then haste, haste, send in for 12. Main phase two, maybe get a dryad here. Oh, we got other plans. Oh, we're making another titan. Okay, so mirror pool. I'm sorry, the echoing depths comes back as a mirror pool, uh, which will trigger again and make the untap. This can make for another titan. Now we're going to have three titans and three titans with haste uh, only twice because of the amulet. There's only two untaps for two hastes. Unless I'm missing a piece, which I probably am. Um, Let's look. Let's let Canister do his thing. All right, Canister knows what knows what's going on here. So let's just kind of watch uh, watch the man cook. So we got Gruel Turf. We got the Battlement and the Valakit. So Battlement will untap twice, and that will allow for uh, multiple activations on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, sure. So what was that? Turn three. Yeah, I don't know if I he needed that third Titan, but I kind of feel like he just made it to flex a little bit. <laughs> I Not mean, Cancer's right. played like a total of like I don't know eleven turns with this deck so far. Our games went was turn three, turn four, turn three, and this is turn three also. So, uh, Amulet Titans fast, folks. There's no uh, no denying it. So, what's happening here post board? Um, I think you have like a bunch of Pyroclasm effects. If you're Canister, right? Yeah, is Pyroclasm times two Fire Spout. He's got a couple copies of Generous Ant to. Get a food token if he ever wants to cast it as a six drop or just four cycle against the blood moon. He's citing out all of his Urza sagas because he knows blood moon's coming. Wow. And that's interesting too. On Rebel side, we see the, the pick your poisons coming in, which is a good answer to Urza saga, uh, as well as, of course, the amulet, blood moon coming in, meltdown coming in, and these grindy cards going out. So, uh, you know, unstable amulet and friends, amp raptor, are, you know, not looking super great here. This charge is also coming out too. So, I mean, this works out pretty well, right? You know, if you're just playing a super aggressive deck, and you bring in a, a good amount of hate cards interaction. It should be a decent plan. Uh, you know, who do you think is favorite post board here? I think it's still canister with all those pyroclasms and fire spouts. I don't know how many Tormaz Crypt Rebel wants because it only really targets the six drop and also the aftermath analyst. And if canister doesn't draw either of those, which he has one copy apiece, then Tormaz Crypt is very useless. Yeah, honestly though, it, it is just a free spell. So if you're in the if Rebels in the mindset of like I have to goldfish as fast as humanly possible, some random free spell could be worse for sure. But yeah, I agree. It has a little bit of the marginal utility there too. So we see uh, a mulligan at the double blood moon for rebel. Uh pick your poison to spear. It's in, in a bit of an iffy hand. And then on Canister side, we see uh splunking the ring and explore a much more fair hand that honestly is very well lined up. Basic farce for blood moon. Uh, can cast the ring on turn three and draws an amulet too. Canister's cooking right now. It, canister is the amulet professional. Don't have an amulet, draw an amulet. Start your hand, two amulets, minimum. <laughs> yeah, so now we see the amulet come down. The risk pick your poison here, uh, which can't pick off this amulet. But honestly, like, Canister, one of the things that happens in these post-war games, obviously, is that when the hate cards come in, the decks slow down. And what's really good in a slower game? How about turn three ring, right? Draw some cards, play the game that way. So we're going to see pick your poison here. Gonna take out the uh, the amulet of vigor pretty cleanly. Uh, Bob will come down as well for a prowess trigger. We'll see attack for three, but that's really it. You know, uh, these blood moons are are waiting for a third land, and even if they do come down, explore into ring has blood moon has no effect on that at all. Yeah, these just like tap fairy lands here. We just go like shifting woodland, explore, tap Polario West, untap Basaju Ring is probably honestly going to be good enough against rebels current hand just have two blood moons because canister's hand is pretty blood moon resilient especially with that besage you yeah i mean besage you to area uh and then again the ring also just solves all problems this can even just be like a, a cast the ring draw some cards cast titan just cast it you know kind of game too so we see a drop of foothills for rebel here 
Uh, Suspear also, what do you think? Are you thinking Blood Moon or are you thinking Suspear here? I think you have to just be mana efficient and cast the three mana spell. All right, so Blood Moon comes down. We now you have, have a farce, from... two mountains for uh, Canister. Uh, in for two with Suspear down to 14 on Canister's side. Canister untaps and draws a Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Uh, time stamps that o that overcomes Blood Moon, is that correct? Correct. And then if uh, Rebel casts the second Blood Moon, it will beat the Dryad at that point. All right, time stamps for days. Uh, so Besaju is going to get played here as a mountain. And I mean, the one ring is, it's just good, folks. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Probably like that's such a sign of strength from Canister to play out Baseju into the Blood Moon, just being like, Yeah, that's a nice Blood Moon you got there. Here's my Baseju. I don't need Yeah, it. so interesting. That might be predicated a little bit on the Dryad, maybe overcoming the uh, Blood Moon, but second Blood Moon will ha have that number. We'll see. Although, if Rebel goes to Spear Blood Moon here, then I guess there's no reason to do that because of the, the yeah. ring protection, but, ring but still. So, all right. So we see uh, Ring takes a ding. Counter stand to 13. Michael Synth Guards is a draw. Also, the Barrow Downs. Uh, what is the Barrow Downs? That is Pajuka Bug. Pajuka Bug. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so we got three mana for a, see a Dryad here, perhaps. And we also see uh, an Explore, Grazer. And again, the, the cards from the ring are just insane. And then, of course, the Dryad will allow more land drops also. And uh, looking pretty good for Canister here. What's our Rebel's Path? I don't know if she has one at this point. I mean, playing the second Blood Moon is very nice to override this Dryad, but things are not looking good because you just gave Canister an entire turn with green mana thanks to this Dryad. So I guess to deploy all of these green cards that would normally be very restricted otherwise, looks like we're going for the Grazer over the Explorer. Yeah, it's awkward because the, the card that could answer the ring or the Dryad and pick your poison is uncastable on Rebel side thanks to the Blood Moon as well. So Arbor comes down, a bunch of lands come down. We now see seven lands in play for Canister, a ring, a Titan in hand. Slick Shot show up a drop for Rebel, uh, which is a good one, you know, but the uh, Grazer can block that one also uh, for at least a turn. Uh, and now there's some work to do. I mean, I mean, could there be like a chain of possible draws with the, uh, the Slick Shot show off maybe? I, I don't know. It's looking tough here. I think it starts with Swift Spear Blood Moon this turn, just because you need to put a new layer of Blood Moon over this Dryad. Otherwise, you're just going to lose on the spot to it. So I think that's probably step one. And then step two is going to be figure out how to come, like find maybe a Discharge or a Bolt for this Grazer and then fly over with Slick Shot. Things are not looking great for Rebel, but if she can chain together a few draws here, it's definitely doable, especially since Canister is taking two from this ring at upkeep and he's going down to 11. Yeah, the ring is thing in a way. And one important thing to note is that the Dryad, uh, it makes the lands tap for any color, but the Blood Moon's still in play. These are still just mountains that tap for any color. So their abilities of Mirror Pool and, and the Mycosyn Gardens are all not on right now. So we see uh, a Blood Moon here. Coming down number two, so layers will take over. These are all back to being mountains. We have a bunch of mountains and a forest. That does stop uh, Titan from being cast at the moment. So that's, that's, a, that's a win, you know. And then we're going to see uh, Rebels going to be sneaky here and try and hold the Swiss Spear. What are your thoughts on that? I think I like being mana efficient because you know you have to play a two drop this next turn. If you top deck like another two drop. Ah, yeah, if you top deck another <laughs> two drop, then you want to spend all four mana. Fire spout. Okay, well, this is what we played around, right? All right, so that yeah, looks look, look good to me. So plays around fire spout. And keeps the uh to spear available for later. It's also sneaky too, right? The haster's like, you know, there's no good attack right now. If you can just save it for later, maybe find a find a spot to get in. But uh here, here comes old generous ant. When the game gets scrappy, uh generous ant is a pretty decent card to cast. Five seven makes a food, has reach also. So slick shots show off, not a lot of paths. Can yeah, so confident the dryad is coming in for two. Yeah, I mean, that was another sign of strength from canister, not cycling the ant, just casting and saying go. Yeah, and uh, and the, the cycling would have enabled the Titan next turn, but Kanner says that this thing's good enough. But here's the spear, and we're going to see the show off being held. Interesting. With the Lava Darts, there's a few more spells that could have been cast to try and trade the show off for the Ent, uh, but going to wait and try and find a better spot. See another ring drawn, and that's that's. There are now too many cards to fit on the page, uh, and the second ring is also the insurance policy necessary. You know, you don't want to die to your own ring. And uh, second copy ring does that pretty well. So this is a lot of stuff. Yeah, play second ring, eat food. Seems like a pretty good line this turn. Also, notably, this forest does tap for any color of mana. It's not super relevant here, but I figured it was worth mentioning. Because even if you overlay multiple blood moons over this dryad, basics will still tap for any color. 
kind of a cute thing here too is that these growth chambers these growth chambers come into play uh untapped thanks to spelunking and of course no bounce because they're mountains if the blood bones are removed they will have you know extra mana as well but just coming in here just here comes the tree folk here comes the dryad rebel down to seven and then a huge hand uh the ring will come down as well which will keep uh canister alive for another turn uh, no damage can be dealt and a food available also Kind of a weird, scrappy game. This is the first game Canister has played more than three turns in. You know, this entire tournament ended with this deck. Uh, but showing how Amulet Titan can be fairly flexible. How does it feel to have to play Magic Canister? I mean, apparently so it feels good for him because he's just like hard casting, you know, limited <laughs> bomb Jennison. Right. So, Rink comes down, draw some cards. Uh, we got some Titans rolled up. Uh, if we could find some more green. One Ring, I mean, Fire Spout, just... It's being up anyway. So growth the draw for Rebel. Um, and again, the reach on the Arbor. If there if there was a way for Rebel to kill this Arbor, there could definitely be a path this turn. You know, uh it's throw off lava dart, flashback, mutagenic growth. I'm sorry, the, the rings down too. Ring right? protection, yeah. So many things happened last turn. I bet that just kind of yeah. So um yeah, just looking for uh for some some light and ending the tunnel here. And I'm not not really seeing it for Rebel, unfortunately. I think you maybe plot slick shot this turn. I don't even know if that giving him more information is probably not great either. I think you might just have to set up for like the sneaky slick shot. Right. If, if it's plotted, then the, one of the reach creatures will definitely stay at home for sure. It's tough though because it's so mana inefficient. Because you, if you're going to win next turn with some explosion of spells, it's going to need to be an explosion of spells. You know, you have all your mana for that possibly. But we'll see here. Ring draws the more cards, rule turfs to draw. Still no second green. So these titans are stranded. Uh, but the board isn't bad. Um, we see an explore using the one green mana. There's a Besaju, which could pop off one of the blood boons. Not very useful though. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess we're just back to the old generous instance. It is important to note that like there aren't many things for Canister to cast. I mean, another ring could definitely do it, but Canister comes... he could summoner's pack for a generous end and cycle it. I'm not saying that's a great play, <laughs> but it is a play. Yeah, actually, could have could have went for another dryad too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, another dryad is definitely way better. Yeah, definitely risky. Obviously, being under Summoner's pack with one forest in play is a little scary. But the end comes in. Uh, the Assist spirit takes a chump block. Rebel down to five, and another ring here. We're gonna make a uh, another turn of uh, no damage for Rebel. It's, uh, it's tough. Uh, if you're canister, do you draw a card here? I don't think you need to. I think he's. Pretty content not casting these titans in hand and just waiting with the generous hand plus the dry item. All right, so Canister's thinking about it. Gonna draw the card. Canister's greedy and picks up a Vesuva, also known as Mountain. Because if you're thinking about it from Canister's side, like how do you lose this game? It's just getting burned out. And if you're going to nine from the ring, that's a lot riskier than staying at ten, right? Against the lightning bolt deck. Almost a more school, similar school thought, honestly. There's a, a lightning bolt drawn, but uh, again, no damage available because of the ring this turn. Uh, I suppose the so Spirit can jump block again, and Rebel will get one turn. Um, do you think maybe this is the point that Rebel had to plot this show off just for mana efficiency? Um, probably. Because I don't know how she's cobbling this game together otherwise. Because this Lavadar plus the Lightning Bolt is not going to be enough burn. I guess if Canister swings with the Generous Ent... I think that's not a grazer. And he also has the fire spout. Uh, everything's terrible for Rebel. All right. So it looks like fire spout's being cast. That, that would present lethal with the ent and the thing. Oh, this starts on the on the bolt. Now the bolts can kill things. And that's something like lava dart. You can also mutagenic and save the swift spear. But then you're going to three. Or you just fire off the bolt and the dart, right? And just yeah, like, you can fire off both and then yeah. save it that way. Just Alex to let it die, though. Okay. I mean, now the Grazer's dead, so there's a, a bit of a silver line there. But now the problem is the end just, the end just lethal, right? There's no, there's no yeah. recourse here. You have to, like, spend bolt plus lava dart on the end. And yeah. then after you spend that, Canister's just going to play another Grazer. <laughs> All right, so we see seven toughness, three damage on it from Fire Spout, three damage from Lightning Bolt, and then... Uh, Dart coming in here as well. They'll finish the end off. The dry comes in for two. And then, again, we can see it, obviously, Rebel Camp, but there is another Reach creature there. So, I mean, honestly, Rebel's kind of carving a path here. If there's, like, you know, some way for this uh, Slickshot to get one shot in, 
Like, if there was no razor in hand, this could be it. Draws with ring. Oh, you, oh it finds another ring. Oh, my God. Oh, the, greedy, the greedy draw finds the fourth copy of the ring. Uh, I agree that was very, very risky. Uh, that's an extra two damage for, for next turn, potentially. But now, of course, the ring of protection will probably wrap this one up. But I mean, Rebel was carving a path for sure. Uh, you know, that show off, you know, uh, you know, has a chance. There's a dart in the graveyard. Maybe, uh, you know, draw their free spell here. Fire up a dart or two and, uh, and sneak in for lethal. But the one ring is going to shut that one down. Yeah, it's like the gambler meme. 99% of magic players stop tapping the ring before they hit another ring. <laughs> I haven't heard that one, but I like it a lot. <laughs> All right. That was an Odawara, too. Uh, no blue mana available. Just the one green. Actually, he does have the blue mana with the forest being oh, every color. You're right. That point you made earlier is correct. So the forest is not a mountain. Therefore, it is a, uh, a land for any color uh, layered up on the dryad. Slick shot show off number two. Now, if Rebel had plotted the first show off, Still wouldn't have been enough, I don't think, right? No, nah, just the ring protection. Every oh, the ring play, right? just, it's every so turn is the ring of play. I'm sorry. I figure it's every over at some turn. point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. All right. So slick shots gonna come down on on blocking duty here. Yeah, the probably have slick to. Shots. All right. One of these is most likely gonna get Oda Warred. I mean, do you even care about this dry connecting? Because Rebels at three, not two. Might not even care. Probably Odawara. You could Odawara Blood Moon. And then besiege you the other Blood Moon. If if the Blood Moon that was time stamped ahead of the Dryad is bounced, will we go back to Dryad World? I, yes. It looks like we, yes, looks like we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we're back in the world where Dryad timestamp is overriding everything and every land taps for any color, but the lands are still mountains. They're not the cool lands that they are. Yeah, as we say you also, sure. So now, Canister has been scrapping away this entire fight and just put the sixth Infinity Stone in. It is now completely untapped, has every fancy land in the world, uh, Titans for days, and I think this will Amulet. probably uh, wrap things yeah. up. Yeah, you just give it haste, you know, Kessig Wolf run it, <laughs> and that's that. I do like the Wolf run. That's, that's, that's a good way to go. The old two hand tap on the Wolf run. I played a lot of red green Eldrazi back in the day. Oh, Wolf run was a house. Yeah, cards. That card's really, really cool. All right, here's Titan. Gotta go the boring Titan route. I'm just the uh, tap all your lands wolf, for Wolf Run route. That's okay. Cash is allowed to play the game any way that he wants to. And there you got to win. So, not allowed to play the game. <laughs>